Bolsonaro. So yeah. the leader of Brazil, the president, is Bolsonaro, and uh, I'm not a Brazilian. I don't know a huge amount about Brazilian politics. So I'm a Bolsonaro fan. Uh, I, anything <laughs> I get wrong, please forgive for ignorance, and uh, if there are any Brazilians in the chat who can uh, correct things, we'll, we'll try and promote it from that. But otherwise, let's try and go through what the hell is going on in uh, Brazil right now, because this footage came out, and I was looking at it this morning, which is just some aerial footage of the <coughs> rallies Bolsonaro set up for Independence Day in Brazil. You can see Imagine Now is here saying, there appears to be the largest ever anti-communist, pro-freedom, pro-Bolsonaro inf- intifada happening in Brazil right now. And it is it is huge for people listening. Like, for, for anyone who can't see the screen, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's obviously well over a hundred thousand people, and it looks like a festival. Mm. I, I saw estimates of one hundred fifty thousand, and uh, I don't know. It's it's just I, I've not seen anything this big. We go to the next one. There's some more footage in which you can see the the sizes down the side of the beach, and you can just see just swarms of people going on forever and ever and ever. And this is just a political Bloody rally. Hell, this is just like a thing. like a Trump rally or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it's Trump just... can't draw these numbers. No, good God. <laughs> so, you know, if people are wondering who the hell Bolsonaro is, I thought we'd just go through this. God Emperor of Brazil. Yeah, so uh, Brazil's homicide rate, largest in the world, 57,000 people a year killed yep. in homicides. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so pretty extreme place for Staring. crime. So Bolsonaro was spending a lot of his time campaigning against crime. And the fact that Brazil was a terrible place for homicides and all the rest of it. Yes. So you get the next one. Um, yeah, so it was a pretty surpri- It was not a surprise when he got stabbed whilst campaigning. Yeah, by and, a communist. And uh, kind of proved the point. The the thing about the the guy who stabbed him, he was a socialist and liberty party member for a few years. There we go. And then he went out and stabbed him. But in the court ruling, they later determined that he was just mentally ill. Oh well, I mean, yeah, well he's a socialist. I mean, what are you going to say? It's uh, very based by the judge. But uh, this also <laughs> produced some very based memes with his campaigning yeah. because this had been brewing for a long time. Uh, Bolsonaro coming up through this sort of thing. And uh, I thought we'd just play this clip of just based things he's done. É só você não estuprar, não sequestrar, não praticar latrocínio que você não vai pra lá, porra! Ah, mataram 60 mil, ó. Eu queria que matasse 200 mil vagabundos. Tô chegando aí, Pris! Tô chegando aí! Os senhores não estão preocupados com a segurança pública, agindo como mocinhas, como maricas! Um dia a polícia vai parar, e não é por salário, não. Tem, tem família, tem esposa, ele é um cidadão. Se atiro no vagabundo, vou pra cadeia. Se não atiro, vou pro cemitério. Tem uma vida atrás daquela farda e não dou bola pra essa vida. Atirou com a intenção de matar. É lógico que atirou com a intenção de matar, porra. Ele tá com o fuzil na mão, é pra fazer carinho. Tropa de elite, eu sou que ninguém. Vou passar na sua queda, porra, aqui é pra criança. Quer queimar a outra e vai queimar a porra? Vai queimar a tua rosquinha de conta, tu tem que entender, porra. Não estou preocupado com o voto. O político que preocupa com o voto é um canalha como outro qualquer. Eu sou acusado de tudo, só sou velho corrupto, né? <laughs> I love that line that's, so much. That's the famous quote. And, and that's because the, the left in Brazil is so unbelievably corrupt. They accuse me of everything but corruption. So, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So, so um, Bolsonaro genuinely is my spirit animal. That's people, what I'd be like if I were. For people listening who do, who couldn't understand the the foreign, um, I just think based noises throughout. <laughs> yeah, just, just base statement after base statement. And and he's such a, a fantastic anti-communist crusader. Yeah, you know he has got no time for any of their bull. So anyway, that's him coming in, and the reason he's talking about corruption is, of course, because his predecessor uh, impeached for corruption. <laughs> so this is this lady, and uh, then the predecessor before that, if we go to the next one, yeah, uh, he got. Kicked out for corruption. Lula, the communist favorite. You can watch like various communist podcasts. They're like, oh, Lula's back. And it's like, yeah, why is he back? Hmm. So if we go to the, the next one here, you mentioned about the communists, their party being the Workers' Party, mm. which is totally about social democratic mm, politics. Nice red like, star. Yeah, That's I don't Cuban. buy this for a minute, you mm. bunch of liars. So it's no surprise that they're all convicted for corruption. So, uh, <laughs> But then there's a bit of a weird situation. So the corruption uh, Lula was charged with was a scandal in which they were misappropriating funds and all the rest of it. And uh, since then, he has been, the Supreme Court overlooked his case again and decided that he didn't do nothing. And hmm. uh, have quashed his charges. Hmm. Ten out of the eleven members of the Supreme Court are members of the Workers' Party. Hmm. I'll leave that there. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know the facts of the whole thing, but it's very sus from hmm. an outsider perspective. So apparently, L- Lula was convicted for corruption, and yeah. then the Supreme Court, though he a- 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 appointed ten people to ten of the people out of the eleven are his party members. Overturned his conviction for corruption. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know the full facts, but it looks very, very sus. Yeah. So he is apparently now allowed to rerun for his position. So if we scroll down, this is the <laughs> opinion not? polling for the 2020 Brazilian general election. Mm. And there's a graph here of the popularity. You can see Lula shooting up the, mm. you know, the Workers' Party overtaking Bolsonaro for the position. Um, yeah, so that's the it's situation. It's not that. Was he at 37 and Bolsonaro is at 25, 27, sorry? Uh, he's higher than that, uh, 40% for, for Lula, something like that. Well, not the very end point. Yeah, but, but either I way, know. you know, it's a staggering amount of growth. And yeah, but you know what it's going to be. It's going to be non-stop left-wing media promotion. And then non-stop left-wing media condemnation of Bolsonaro. That's what it's going to be. I imagine they have a very similar problem to what yeah. we have. So what has the evil Bolsonaro man been up to? Um... I don't know everything, but I do know some things, and some of the some things are, are very interesting. Bolsonaro accused of endorsing misinformation after issuing order <laughs> against social media censorship. <laughs> right, so he's based on social media, right? Go he was on. like, yeah, you shouldn't censor people on social media for doing nothing wrong, and then, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, this is misinformation. You are misinformation. So the, the quote from here, the president of Brazil, uh, Bolsonaro, has been accused of enabling disinformation and hate speech after he issued a decree that, if passed, will prevent social media companies from arbitrarily removing content. So for protecting free speech, he has been, this is been repackaged as enabling disinformation and hate speech. Yeah, Bolsonaro's executive order for free speech on the internet proposes to reinforce the rights and guarantees of social media users while combating the arbitrary and unreasonable removal of accounts, profiles, and content by providers. <sighs> It's amazing. Reasonable. Yep. The measure, whose installment will be decided by the Brazilian Congress, would protect users' rights for freedom of expression and issue social media companies with a just cause requirement and user notification system prior to the removal of content. See, so, that, that's fantastic, right? And that's how things should be. And honestly, I think that people like Mark Zuckerberg would prefer it that way in the end, where the arbitration of who gets to use the social media thing, it just isn't in their hands. Because for them, it's a no-win situation. They have yeah. to sense people and get like unbelievable amounts of bad PR or they get unbelievable amounts of bad PR from the people who are who want other people censored. So it'd be easier for them to just hoist it off to a government agency. And they already do hoist it off to someone else most of the time, mm. which is they'll give a contract to Cognizant, which mm -hmm. Ryan Hartwig, the whistleblower from Project Veritas, yep. used to work at for Facebook. And uh, it's a joke. You know, the whole situation is yeah. a joke. Anyway, but uh, there's that. So what was the, the response? Uh, Alessandro Molon, a member of the Brazilian Socialist Party, responded by saying, what Bolsonaro is to prevent the disinformation and hate speech he and his supporters spread from continuing to be removed from platforms. Who really benefits from the fake news pr released? I was like, okay. So this, this is the, the critics, is, is, is the Socialist Party members. Okay, I'm sure they're the other side of Brazilian politics. Uh, I have no respect for them whatsoever, calling themselves socialists after the 20th century. But then the fact that he's like, yeah, they want to spread misinformation. It's like, you're a socialist. Yeah. Everything, everything that dis disagrees with your narrative is misinformation. We yeah. know how this game is played. But also, I hate this this terminology of like, oh, my opponents for misinformation. All politics is surrounded with misinformation yeah. on every side all the time. The truth Part lies with us, the socialists. Yeah, but we are all truth and never ever wrong. Yeah. Any Only an idiot makes that claim. A socialist has never lied or embezzled. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so if we go to the next one as well, this is something else he was up to. So apparently he tried to get rid of electronic voting. Based. In response to... America. President Bolsonaro has suffered a defeat in Congress after his plan to replace the el current electronic voting system in Brazil with a publicly audited system using paper trails failed. <laughs> Accountability? That's mm. not good for the socialists. So Why he, want, he want wants to return to a system of paper because you could trace it and uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't get that through Congress. Unbelievable. Hmm. So the, the, this has all been culminating in a whole lot of uh, debacle with the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So apparently he has been arguing with the Supreme Court in Brazil, because they have a weird system where the Supreme Court can block legislation or something, or some of the stuff he wants to do. Right. But also the Supreme Court has been going after activists of his. So he decided for Independence Day, I'm just going to hold a big old rally. Hmm. So there, there should be another link here. This isn't the, the right link. This should be uh, Bolsonaro marching on Congress. So if we if we can get that one up. there's uh, So the, the BBC article is Brazil on edge as Bolsonaro supporters march on Congress. Um, Brazil. Sorry, it, that, that's the same link, so you obviously... Uh not put the correct one in. Mm, no, it should be the other one. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, they've changed the headline. That'll be why. God damn it, BBC. So they, they changed the, the headline here. So right. uh, the police were out in force in Brazil's capital of Brasilia on Tuesday after supporters of far-right Bolsonaro called, and uh, supporters of his answered to his call for a rally. And uh, one of the things I find funny is that the BBC referred to him as far-right in all of their articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ever just look up BBC Lula's name, no mention of him being far-left. It's always President Lula. Oh, just... Centrist, mm. neutral. Couldn't be President 
Bolsonaro. No, no, can't be done. Anyway, so they said it comes after the president was acu- accused the Supreme Court and Congress of blocking his reforms. Critics say he wants to put on a show of strength amid plummeting ratings. One recent opinion poll gave President Lula a nine percentage point lead over Bolsonaro in the first round of voting. Again, like the, the partisanship here of being like, let's celebrate the fact that he's losing. Yep. They don't usually do this. So mm. Mr. Bolsonaro has responded by lashing out at the Supreme Court's justices. Not criticizing them, you know, no neutral article. No, no. no. No, He's lashing out at them. He tried to have one of them impeached after the justice launched two investigations against him. He has also tried to blame the Supreme Court for his government's slow response to the COVID pandemic, falsely alleging that the court prevented him from taking quick action to stop the spread of the virus. Uh, Yeah, I just love the the BBC not giving a a toss. The BBC, the more that you make it seem like we're supposed to hate the man, the more I think, ah, he's obviously the right guy to support. Mm. So he gave a statement. As recently as Friday, President Bolsonaro called on his backers to turn out on Independence Day and give the Supreme Court justices a, quote, ultimatum. Oh, really? And to stop them from, quote, meddling. Mm. Quote, our country can't continue to be held hostage by one or two people, he said on Tuesday in a reference to two of the justices he particularly hates. Mm. Critics of the president have gathered in, uh, gathered for counter-rallies and there are fears that the two sides could clash. What sort of size were these counter-rallies? Do they, we know? They couldn't film mm. them from the sky. Mm. Let's put it that way. Mm. <laughs> so uh, if we go to the, the next one, we have the, the Guardian, who, uh, uh, again, totally neutral, wanted to represent the truth. Thousands turn out for pro and anti-Bolsonaro protests on Brazil's Independence Day with a video. And uh, I watched this video, and you can see the Bolsonaro people, as you can see in this image here. That's endless. the Bolsonaro people, is it? The massive, street-filled, literally wall-to-wall like sardines. Mm. Right. For the anti-Bolsonaro bit, they, mm. they were on the ground, and they were like, you know, uh, what do you call it, a low... Angle yeah, yeah, shot low we angle, have to put up. narrow, yeah. close in. Right, so okay. I couldn't tell how many there were, because purposely... You, Can we you see it? Is, it? is it on there? You could play it if you want, um, to show it up. I don't know if the audio auto plays or something. Yeah, if we can skip like 30 seconds in or something like that, you can see the... There we go. That's that's a little bit before then. Go back a bit. Go back a bit. You can see the, the anti-Bolsonaro. Back a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's so like, no drone, drone footage, some very close in. So it could be a couple of hundred people... And Bolsonaro clearly has tens of thousands. Yeah, and then you have it for a couple of seconds right. as well. They're like, eh, cut the feed. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah. so if we, uh, if we go to the next one, one of Bolsonaro's sons has been tweeting some of the images out of all of this, and I found this hilarious. Some of the signs that were brought were, President, we want the use of armed forces. <laughs> so it's the, it's the last image on this one, where you have this little lady. It's, it's so cute. Oh, yes. <laughs> we want the use of the armed forces. We want hmm. dictators judges out of supreme court yeah based uh, there was a there was another one blowing which is some lady holding a sign saying bolsonaro save us from communism based <laughs> i love this they voice. know what the problem is they know i mean brazil's been r- rife with this for decades now yeah and Br- bolsonaro happened to, he was a captain in the military and he was he yeah. was mm. he, i think he still got that rank so just saying if there's if there's someone who's gonna do something yeah so uh one of the other things so the, the, the fight is ultimately as i understand it between the supreme court and him because they're the two bodies that run Brazilian politics. And the Supreme Court is not like the American one. It's got the same name, yeah. similar name, but it's uh, it's not like they, they give a toss about the Constitution because it's like, no. you know, 20 years old. It gives us like, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, and then the, most of their job is more about prosecuting people, and they've been doing a pretty corrupt job of that. Wow. Because they're the ones who went after Lula and whatnot, and therefore mm-hmm. are the defenders of democracy, you know, anti-corruption, gold stars. And then when everyone's like, yeah, Bolsonaro, the fascist dictator <laughs> who wants to kill everyone, and they seem to have done the uh, Trump derangement syndrome right. stance and have started doing things which are out of the whack. The so, fascist dictator who wants to make sure that people's human rights aren't infringed, arm the populace and bring down the number of gang murders. Yeah. What a Nazi. Yeah. So the, the CEO of Geta went out to Brazil to support Bolsonaro on Independence Day and mm-hmm. hang out with the conservatives there. So this is his post on Geta. Such an honor to meet the first lady of Brazil. So you can see him hanging out with uh, Bolsonaro's wife there. By the way, next link. Follow us on Geta because... We're on yep. Getter, so yeah, on there, we're also verified on Getter because Getter are good boys. <laughs> we got a verified check mark. Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> <I don't laughs> why? Sorry, we? just in my mind, like if endlessly, that's cursed because oh, of Twitter, no. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, but let's go to the next one so yeah. we can see him hanging out. And uh, he got detained when trying to leave. So you can, if you click on these images, just to show, he he did hang out with Bolsonaro. He's got some Project Veritas merch mm. that he's getting Bolsonaro to sign, which is really funny. Mm. The sign that I'd rather die on my feet than uh, live, live on my, my knees. knees yeah. Yeah, very good. And uh, so the the guy posting this says he, the CEO of Geta was detained at the airport in Brasilia, sitting on the tarmac as he tried to get on. Also, he's a former Trump advisor, so that's the other thing here. Mm. He's being interrogated by the Supreme Court anti-Bolsonaroists on the day of the massive pro-Bolsonaro rally 
where he met with Bolsonaro. So he came down, hang out with Bolsonaro, and then he gets back to the airport, and they're like, come and have a word with us, Sonny Jim. We're here from the Supreme Court. Amazing. Mm. So if we go to the next one, Jason's team posted on, on Twitter a statement from him in which he said, This afternoon, my traveling party was questioned for three hours at the airport in Brasilia after having attended this weekend's CPAC Brazil conference. We were not accused of any wrongdoing and told that they only wanted to talk. Mm. Hmm. We inf- informed them that we had nothing to say and were eventually released to fly back to the United States. Our goal of sharing free speech around the world continues. Incredible. And if we go to Disclose TV, they confirm that, yeah, this, this order was apparently given by the Supreme Court, a specific judge as well, a particularly corrupt one that Bolsonaro is alleging needs to go. Miller was reportedly detained to testify to the federal police under investigation, blah, 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 which is investigating the organization of anti-democratic acts in Brazil. Oh, they'd know. Mm. Christ on a bike. <laughs> in o- the order came from Alexandra de Morales, a justice for the Supreme <clears throat> Federal Court. So, the specific name, Alexandria, here, we're going to keep in mind. Mm. So, we go to the next one. You can see a picture of him. This egg. Egg of a man. <laughs> it just looked like an egg. Yep. Anyway, so if we go to the, the next one, some of the stuff he's been up to, in sp- specifically, is awful. I mean, it just sounds really? terrible. Really? Um,. I, 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 this is where I've got sympathies with Bolsonaro. I mean, again, I don't know the situation, but the, the situation sounds awful just reading it. Mm. So this is uh, the claim from him and his supporters that the Supreme Court has been censoring their supporters, yep. politicians, journalists who support them, yep. comedians, average citizens. Seems that way. There was a claim of some guy who was a, a truck driver who was just like talking S about the Supreme Court and someone who worked for the Supreme Court overheard him. So they brought a prosecution against him for insulting the Supreme Court. And I was like, oh, okay. I wasn't able to confirm that, but I saw someone talking about that who's Brazilian, so, I mean, they, they don't want me. Yeah. So this is the article, Dictatorship of the Supreme Court, Senator Reacts to Alexandria de Morales' Decision. Uh, Minister Alexandria de Morales of the Federal Supreme Court, STF, who ordered the website O Antagonia, the magazine... O Antagonista. O Antagonista, and the magazine Crusoe, to withdraw from the air immediately. An article entitled, quote, Friend of My Father's Friend which quotes the president of the court, Dias Tofloffi. The magazine repudiated the decision and denounced the case as censorship. So some guy who runs a website are published an article with quotes from the president of the Supreme Court saying they bad. And the Supreme Court's like, no you don't. (laughs) Censor that. Alexandra also imposed a daily fine of 100,000 Brazilian... I don't know what they use. Yeah, probably seashells. 100,000 seashells in case of disobedience. Quote, I determined that the website O Antagonista and the magazine Crusoe immediately removed from their rectus- ref- retrospective virtual environments the article entitled My Father and My Father's Friend and subsequent posts dealing with the subject under penalty of a daily fine of 100,000 seashells whose term will be counted from the summons to those responsible. In the decision, Alexandria de Morales cites an inquiry opened by Diaz to Fluffy in March that the existence of fraudulent news, fake news, slanderous denunciation, threats or infractions coated with intention to defame or injure which affect honorability and security of the federal Supreme Court, its members, family members, and the exploration of freedom of expression. Hmm. Okay, get rid of all that garbage. He's literally saying they're insulting me. Hmm. They're insulting me in the court therefore censor them if it's defamatory why don't you bring a lawsuit against them well he is well no that's that's not a lawsuit that's well, i that, mean a lawsuit that says it you're you're nicked yeah that's <laughs> that's a lawsuit because a lawsuit would be to go through the evidence and to have a, a trial and then you know both sides can present their evidence and the judge can make a decision yeah so the situation does sound terrible it does sound like bolsonaro's supporters have a point that the supreme court is tyrannical they are just going after people because they don't like them because they're a bunch of commies and they don't like bolsonaro because what is it 10 out of 11 of them were appointed by mm-hmm. the opposition party who now want rid of bolsonaro mm-hmm. it's like well um yeah this this sounds like it could come to heads in and a they coup, won't perhaps. they won't have uh, paper voting because uh, i can sense a fortification in the near future yeah so Bolsonaro's rhetoric has been getting pretty spicy. <laughs> so let's go through this. This is the fun bit. So I will no longer abide to orders issued by Justice Alexandra de Morales, the quote from uh, uh, Bolsonaro. If we go to the next one. So he says, we cannot accept that only one man jeopardizes our democracy and threatens our freedom. Actually, his time is over. Get out. Alexandra de Morales, don't be a scoundrel. Stop oppressing Brazilian people. I speak on behalf of you all. We must demand that political prisoners are freed. 
which seems to be a fair statement because it sounds like he's creating political prisoners. So this is the speech he's giving at the Independence Day rally, you know, mm. that huge crowd. Yeah, yeah. And the article says, at this point, the crowd started to chant, you authorize? I don't know. I authorize. You, you authorize. Foreign. No. Yeah. Meaning that the people was giving the author- authorization or an endorsement to the president to do what ha- ha- what he said had to be done. I like I mean, that. So that I authorize. I authorize. That's, that's that's a very interesting. I like the framing as well. It's like I the people, we, we the people consent to and authorize you. Yeah. That's, that's so I, I spoke to a Brazilian beforehand <laughs> here just to understand this. Apparently, it's it's essentially like, um, yeah. you know, the the president gets his authority from the constitution but the mm-hmm. supreme court's messing that up therefore we'll just give power to the president to do what he wants kind of thing mm. so it's like shouting we the people for trump to mm-hmm. overthrow the corrupt government <laughs> kind of thing so anyway so he says uh, i want to tell you all i want to tell you all that this presidente will no longer abide to any decision issued by the justice alexandria the people's patience has run out he alexandria still has time to get out <laughs> Jesus Christ. And for us, he does not exist anymore. Freedom to the political prisoners. Stop the censorship. Stop the persecution to the conservatives and to those who care about Brazil. When President Bolsonaro ended this statement, the crowd started chanting freedom, freedom. So he's literally just like, I don't recognize the Supreme Court anymore. Go to hell. Mm-hmm. So he, he really is going down with the rhetoric. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the other rhetoric is also great. So we got the, the next one here. You have uh, a quote from him where he says, Last week, he told evangelical leaders who are among his staunchest backers that, quote, I have three alternatives for my future. Being arrested, killed, or victory. (laughs) And again, he took up the theme in his speech on Independence Day saying, Only God will oust me. The question, I suppose, is, uh, is is Bolsonaro enough of a mad lad to follow through on his rhetoric? He's he's going to go for it. So uh, there's there's also one more here, which is fantastic. So Glenn Greenwald, who's been following the story, he's much involved involved with Brazilian politics and the scandal and all the rest of it. So uh, more authority. Is he a Bolsonaro supporter? I I don't think so. Uh, uh, He will be by the end of it. (laughs) So so he says, after Bolsonaro threatened the Supreme Court today and then vowed to disobey court orders, what's happened next? The Supreme Court justices now meeting to determine their response. Sao Paulo's governor, others demand the impeachment for the first time. And Bolsonaro says, I'll only leave when the presidency is dead. I'll only <laughs> leave the presidency dead. Yeah. Love so it. So when he's dead, he's going to leave. So literally, I'm not leaving, no matter what happens. I don't recognize your authority. Also, uh, we have a history of military coups in this country. <laughs> <laughs> a proud uh, history. And I just happen to have been a captain in the army. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in Brazil. But as a foreigner, it damn is funny. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to prelotuseaters.com and get access to all our premium content. Things like our book club, where we examine classics like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and examine the themes that underpin it. And now we're getting worryingly close to that. Or modern books like Mark Sidwell's The Long March, which is how exactly we ended up in the current cultural situation we're in and what conservatives can do about it. Or you can check out the other series we have, such as our Contemplation series, where uh, Hugo and Josh decided to, in the latest one, have a look at uh, an examination on the ways that other elections have been rigged for no reason at all. Or you can check out our Epoch series, which is one of my personal favorites, because this is where I get to talk about history. And I love I love talking about just random things from history. And one of the great things we can do with this series is talk about those things that aren't so often discussed. So, I mean, you can talk about Xerxes' army, the vast army that invaded uh, Greece during the Greek- Greco-Persian Wars. Or we can go through things like Herodotus's view on the Scythians. Uh, who are they? You probably don't know, but they used to be quite an important people a long time ago, and they're very, very interesting. We've got some really good reports about them. Or we've got premium podcasts, which is things we generally don't want to put outside of the paywall because we might get in trouble for them, such as the list of things that Alex Jones was right about. Uh, or we do just very interesting discussions because there are things that we do lots of work on. Uh, another one is that I'm particularly proud of is where Christopher Hitchens, the famous new atheist, would have fallen during the modern culture wars because he probably wouldn't have been very woke. But uh, we also have lots of interviews and articles and other things on the website that you can sign up to enjoy, and uh, we th- we're we really proud of them. So if any of that sounds good to you, go over to lotuses.com and sign up for as little as £5 a month to support us, keep the show going, and also to get access to all the content. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>